Welcome to the level one quantitative methods summary video series. The final reading in quantitative methods is technical analysis. And this reading is a little different from all the other readings. You will notice that there are lots of graphs, lots of pictures. So my high level advice is that you understand the graphs. This reading doesn't have many examples, but all the practice problems at the end are very good. They are all in MCQ format. This is a relatively new reading. It was first introduced in 2011, unlike all the other quant readings which have been around for very long. So the quality of questions here is very high and make sure you do all those questions at least two or three times. I obviously will not be able to go over every single graph, but in this particular segment, I'll at least emphasize what it is that you need to know. And I've aligned this part of the presentation with the learning objectives. The first learning objective has to do with the principle and assumptions behind technical analysis. Technical analysis can be thought of as the study of collective investor psychology or sentiment. The premise is that human behavior is not always completely rational. Human beings are driven by emotion. And since market participants at the end of the day are humans, therefore it is only expected that emotion makes its way into financial markets. So to make to give you a very simple example, if everybody is upbeat about the market, there is a positive emotion, then it is conceivable that the market will have a positive momentum and prices become higher than what is rationally justified. So that's the fundamental premise. It is a form of security analysis. End of the day, you are buying stocks, let's say, to make a return. And if you do your technical analysis well and technical analysis happens to work in your market, then this is a way of making money. We basically use technical analysis to decide when to buy and when to sell uh, investments. The good thing about technical analysis is that it does not require detailed knowledge of the underlying instrument. So you are just looking at the volume numbers or the price numbers or some other metrics that are somehow derived based on price and volume to make a decision. You don't need to go study the economic drivers and the competitor behavior and the cash flow and all the other things that we discuss in the curriculum. As I mentioned before, the objective is to make a buy, sell or hold decision. The underlying logic behind technical analysis is that supply and demand determines price. So no matter what the underlying state of a company, if you believe that the demand for a given stock is going to be very high, then you buy. Because if the demand is going to be high, then what will happen to the price of the stock? It will go up. And then obviously changes in supply and demand can change prices. And a premise is that prices can be projected with charts and other technical tools. You need to know your charts and I haven't listed the charts here, but you need to actually either from my video lecture or from the curriculum, look at the pictures corresponding to each of these. So you need to know what is a line chart very simplistically in the line chart, the X axis is time. And then you are looking at stock prices plotted against time. What does this tell you? At the most basic level, it can tell you whether a stock is trending up or trending down. Then you have a bar chart which has more information. In addition to the trend, it will also show you for any given period, be it a day or be it a week, the opening price, the closing price, the high price and the low price. And then there are candlestick charts which are a little more elaborate. So in addition to all of the above, the way the candlestick chart is structured, it also shows you whether the market closed up, which means the closing price higher than opening price or whether the market closed down. You need to understand the concept of trend, support, resistance and change in polarity. Market participants often display a herd mentality, which means that if there is a positive trend, then even if some fundamental factor changes, but because of that trend, the momentum, the herd mentality, the trend continues for a little bit of time, even beyond the point where new information has come in that suggests that stock price should 
come down. That's the premise behind technical analysis. And I'll just make a point here that later on in equity, we'll study the concept of efficient markets. If efficient markets hold, then technical analysis will not make you money. But by definition, somebody who's trying to make money based on technical analysis is assuming that his market or the market where he is operating is not efficient. Question? Exactly. So if, if you can make money using technical analysis, then the market is not even weak form efficient. All right, so you, know, you need to know these terms. Uptrend is where a market reaches higher highs. So what does that mean? If the market is going like this, to say that you have an uptrend, you look at all the highs, and if every time the high is higher than the previous high, then we say we have an uptrend. Downtrend means that the market has lower lows. So if the market is going like this, where the lows are lower than the previous low, then we say we have a downtrend. This would be the downtrend line which connects the lows and this would be the uptrend line which connects the highs. Actually, I said that wrong. The trend line for the uptrend touches the lows and the trend line for the downtrend touches the highs. And here again, I would emphasize that you need to go look at these charts in the curriculum. Support, resistance and change in polarity. What does this mean? If we have a chart that looks roughly like this, when we say that the market or a given stock has reached a support level, this is a support level. That means that stock price is down and at the support level, the selling will stop and buying will start. The, the thought here is, that the market at a certain point believes that, okay, the stock has gone too low, so the selling will stop and buying will begin. This is called a resistance level, where the market believes that, okay, the stock price has reached a high, and then people stop buying and start selling. So that's the resistance line. So think of the resistance line as a resistance to an increase in stock price, and a support level as a support based, you know, below which the price will not go. But this is not a hard rule. Sometimes the resistance and support changes. For example, the stock price here might break through the resistance level and then the old resistance level might become the new support level and then we have a higher resistance level. When this happens, this is called a change in polarity. All right, next is chart patterns. So one thing is to understand charts, the candlestick chart and the, the bar chart and the so on. Then after that, you also need to be able to look at the patterns and be able to predict what will happen. Patterns can be reversal patterns or continuation pattern. A reversal pattern is one which says that, okay, the trend is now going to reverse. A continuation pattern means that the trend will continue. So here are the various reversal patterns. These are continuation patterns. And in my regular lecture or from the curriculum, you need to look up these patterns and just need to recognize what they are. I have picked the one that I think is most likely to be tested, which is a head and shoulders pattern, which looks like this. So the name should give you a hint. Notice that you have a head and then you have two shoulders. This is a reversal pattern, which means that when you see this pattern, then initially if you had an uptrend, then after this pattern, you can expect a downtrend. The next question then becomes, if there is an expected downtrend, where do you expect the price to end up? And the answer is, you do this formula. You look at the neckline, which is this, and then from the neckline, you subtract, subtract this distance, the head, Let's say this distance is 5 and let's say the neckline is at 50. Then what you expect the target price to be is 50 minus 5 which is 45. Now this is again not a hard and fast rule. It's just based on observations in the past when technical analysts have seen this sort of a pattern. They predict that the trend will reverse and they predict that the price will end up being 45. 45 again being start with the neckline as your base and then minus the distance from the head to the neck. All right. 
so just to keep you with me, we talked about charts, then we talked about chart patterns. This item is technical indicators. Very broadly speaking, you can have indicators based on price shown on the left side of the screen and then indicators not based on price shown on the right. Not based on price, we are looking at sentiment indicators. So you do opinion polls. Are you bullish on the market, bearish on the market? Ask enough experts. If most people are bearish, then what will you expect the market to do? You will expect it to go up. There can be some calculated statistical indices for the sentiment. Another type is flow of funds indicators. Okay, some people here are talking about bearish and bullish, just to make sure you know this. Bullish means, bullish means that you expect the market to go up. Bearish means that you expect the market to go down. All right. Fund of funds indicators, uh, flow of funds indicators means that you are looking at where funds are going and using that to predict stock prices or whatever asset you are evaluating. And the logic is straightforward. The funds that are flowing in or out are giving you an indication for the supply and demand. And ultimately, it is the supply and demand which will impact the prices in the market. Now, I'm not going to go over each of these. At the most basic level, you need to recognize these sorts of indicators and you need to recognize the names. Obviously, I would want you to be more diligent here and then learn a couple of lines about each of these, which are given in my regular lecture. On the left hand side, we have price based indicators. So you have moving average lines, which basically take the average of the last 20 days or 30 days. So the point of using a moving average is that it smooths things out. So if you have stock movement like this, a moving average will be smoother and it will give you a better sense for what's going on. Then somebody named Bollinger created bands using the concept of moving averages and essentially the bands are around the stock movement and these bands allow you to determine where to buy, where to sell. Momentum indicators or momentum oscillators are also based on price and these are the different kinds of momentum oscillators. I would encourage you to learn at least a line or two about each of these. Next point is cycles and here again all I've done is there are not that many learning objectives in this reading. So I've taken each learning objective and put a slide based on each one. So you need to know these. Technicians use various cycles to predict future movements in security prices. Even cycles, you know, in fields such as astronomy and climate can influence the economy and hence capital markets. These are the commonly referenced cycles. Any of these might just show up on the exam as one possible cycle. So I'd say you learn the bullet point or two given with each type of cycle or pattern. Elliott wave theory, according to this theory, market moves in regular repeated waves or cycles, patterns of five waves as shown below, each wave can be broken into smaller sub waves. So an important aspect here is that the pattern follow ratios which are based on the Fibonacci sequence. And if you want to be diligent, you can learn more about this. I think the probability of being tested on the details are low, but to be diligent, you should learn this material. And then the final slide here, intermarket analysis. This is based on the principle that all markets are interrelated and influenced each other. So you look for inflection point in one market as a sign for what will happen in another market. Use of relative strength analysis for different groups of securities to make asset allocation decisions. So you can do intermarket analysis where you look at stock related indices versus bond, the interaction of different sectors in the economy and stock markets from different countries.